Hi, I'm Mary Beth Quinn, a mixed media artist, and today I'm doing an abstract landscape with the limited palette of magenta, yellow gold, and black and white only. So here are all the materials that I'm going to use in this project. Um, I have a number of brushes that all get different effects, uh, a piece of really soft graphite. And as I said, I am only going to use two colors, this yellow gold right here, and then uh, quinacridone magenta. And I'm just going to limit myself to that. Later, I will bring in um, some additional colors with those tempera paint sticks that you see up in the top right of the frame, but they are all colors that really I've been able to mix with this limited palette of yellow gold and magenta. So I'm off and running, just mixing a little black with the yellow gold and I have this really beautiful olive color, a yellow green color. Now I'm mixing in some magenta and that makes a really beautiful rusty red. At this point, I'm just loosely making marks. I'm trying to move quickly because um, I'm in my sketchbook here, which just means this is full on experimentation mode. And the whole point is not to think too much and just to see what happens, really. Um, I'm following the color where I like it. I'm not really thinking, or tr I'm trying not to think representationally. I know that I want this to be an abstract landscape, but I'm trying to stay away from thinking, oh, that's a tree, or that's definitely where um, a trail is gonna be, or something like that. I'm trying to, to let things emerge and then decide what things are going to be. So, um, with that loose graphite, uh, the, the line that I made there at the first, I'm just following that. That's my only guide at this point. I have added what seems to be a natural horizon line and sort of responding to that. But as you can see, I'm making these big uh, sweeping, uh, long brush strokes because I don't I don't want the point here to be to make an accurate line or mark or a, a something beautiful again this is more about what happens when I do this this brush that I'm using here is just um, a fabulous brush that I just got at Home Depot they're cheap and I, I love to use cheap brushes as long as the bristles don't fall out. The moment a bristle falls out and gets stuck in my paint, I'm done with it and I throw it away. But um, this one has a lot of bristles that aren't uniformly straight and they're all different lengths and they're fabulous for making marks that really suggest long grasses. So here I've made a really bright sort of uh, red color, reddish orange, um, just with uh, that yellow gold and the magenta and probably a little bit of black. And I'm trying to um, put a little bit in the sky as I have put it in the landscape. So uh, you'll get some unity throughout the whole painting. I used to really just pick up a tube of paint, a color that I liked, and put it straight onto the canvas. And I still do that, you know, to some degree. But um, I did take a couple of really good classes that really talked a lot about you create harmony in a painting by actually, uh, in some cases, limiting your palette and then making sure that um, most everything, every color that you put on your canvas, you put a little bit of of each of the colors in it. So that creates a natural harmony because all of the colors are uh, combining together to some degree and really harmonizing. So um, 
that is one reason that I really like to work with an extremely limited palette because it just helps me get in that mindset with color that you're wanting to have the colors work together and harmonize together. So here, as you can see, I've just pulled out a few uh, collage pieces, something from, it looks like a magazine, um, that just has interesting shapes, colors, and I've just placed them sort of randomly on the painting. Now I'm working with those tempera paint sticks. They're made by Shuttle Art. Um, some of them are, like this pink one that I have here, is very transparent, which I love. I love to put it over the yellow gold because it makes these beautiful, really bright colors. Um, other ones of those paint sticks are very opaque, and some of them are metallic. I think this one is a gold like transparent sort of metallic. You can hardly even see it, but it does put this nice uh, blended, um, slightly sparkly gold over all of um, the sky here. So I've, I've picked these colors in the temper paint sticks, as I said before, because they're um, colors that I can mix with this paint palette really trying to stay in it or as close to in it as I can and now I'm just fleshing out the painting a little bit more so I'm just mixing up or attempting to mix up some really dark colors with that magenta and black and um, just have some places in the paint painting that are anchored focal points but I'm still staying away from trying to determine what they are. I'm, I'm trying to make random marks um, because I'm trying to keep my brain from deciding what things are and naming things because, you know, the sketchbook can really help with that because there is a, a danger in creativity when you name things too soon. Uh, once you determine what something is, then you can miss opportunities for what it could be. Once you determine that, that that is a grassy area that I'm working on there. Once you really get locked in with that, then you might miss opportunities that would arise for something different that it could be. So this sketchbook is really me practicing thinking differently. Um, it's hard for us not to name things. It's a natural thing for the eye to look at something and try to name what it is. And actually, in my process, that is what I, that's a, why I want to leave things loose, because I want the viewer to actually have to do that work in some cases. So I made some marks there with the, the lid of my glazing medium, you can see up there. Um, just making some scratches on the surface to give it texture and fleshing it out a little bit further, trying to mix new colors, and just see where this thing goes. So as I said, I do try to leave things loose enough in landscapes so that the viewer has to use their imagination in some cases. To me, that's what makes a painting really interesting is when um, it sparks my imagination. My imagination has to come into play. But when I'm in the creative process, for my imagination to determine too early that um, something is a tree line or uh, that there's a rock right there, it, it can sort of upend the unfolding process to the point to where you quit 
you quit taking your opportunities for it to be something different or to see where something goes because you're locked into a destination. So that's really what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to keep painting and not even necessarily develop different areas. Just seeing what happens if I keep mixing colors, adding marks, and um, eventually I get to where things do emerge. And it feels like the right time to develop it, to name it and to develop it. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm aiming for right here is finding that time. So I'm mixing that magenta with the black and really trying to get um, a dark contrasting color against that, that creamy color next to it. That's a nice focal point right there. So just putting a little bit at the bottom And then just adding in that dark color a little bit here and there to help it harmonize throughout the throughout the rest of the painting. There I've got a, a nice neutral color going. collage element. I like stripes uh, and this is a piece of uh, collage paper that I, I made before I even started this painting. I have a whole box of them. I'll take uh, tissue paper um, or deli paper and I'll make all sorts of different marks on them and just keep them in a box until I'm, I'm ready for something interesting to put on a painting. So here I'm just adding this one with some purple stripes. It's partially covering that, that previous magazine page uh, collage piece. And it looks like I've made some sweeping white marks there uh, and didn't get them filmed. So now I'm going to address the sky. It's, it's, it's quite busy. I love the colors, of course, but it, it needs something a little bit um, bolder to hold it all together. Maybe become more of a focal point. So here I'm using the um, fluid acrylics, I believe they're golden brand, and I'm not sure if this is the white or if it's a cream color, but I'm just trying to tame that sky down and add a little bit of a unifying feature to it. A wedge, a paint wedge that I'm using there. They're really handy for spreading, um, spreading paint around in a very uniform fashion. Has a very distinctive look to it. Now I'm just mixing up that magenta with a little bit of white paint and just adding some dabs here and there that um, simulate maybe flowers in a field. trying to be as loose as possible because I always am searching for where that line is. How, how crude can the mark be and still, still represent something? Um, I've done a lot of representational landscapes and, and still love to, but I'm very, very curious and interested about how far can I go 
in taking representational things and um, just suggesting them. So really the, the eye has to come in and fill in some missing pieces. I think that's actually really rewarding on a creative level. Um, when we look at paintings and your eye has to do a little bit of work. So now I'm just adding some really bold reflections from the sky into this a little waterway, I guess it might be. And some bolder marks in the sky. And I think that about finishes it up for me. So this was a fun little colorful landscape and I really appreciate you watching and I hope that you subscribe. And on my website, you can pick up my free copy of Art Buyer's Guide to Unleashing Magic in Your Life where you can use art to create intention and focus. And I really appreciate you spending your time here. Thanks for visiting me and come see me on Instagram.